Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Sunday afternoon. A little late here on the update today. I apologize about that. Been kind of busy here on this end. Uh, it is 1.04 p.m. California time, October 26, 2025. Latest activity here shows a 3.8, uh, somewhere out there in the red flag, also 3.5 down here across the area uh, south of Puerto Rico along the plate boundary, it looks like. 3.8 over here across the northern end of the Java Trench. Of course, yesterday we're kind of looking at this specific area. I pinpointed exactly this area for some larger movement uh, in yesterday's update. Uh, we did get some larger activity there this morning, a 6.2, but nothing you know of any major significance. Uh, this area, of course, can produce some big earthquake activity. But a 6.2, that's if fairly large, but can't, just remember, it can't produce much bigger quake activity in the area. Uh, we've just been watching a swarm of activity out here across the crunch zone, but mainly across the Java Trench here into the Indonesia area over the last couple of days. been pretty active, uh, so we are looking at possible increasing magnitudes out here just because of the elevated activity we're seeing today and over the last couple of days. Uh, some decent uptick there across the Philippines as well with a number of aftershocks along the Philippine Trench. 5.0 um, from yesterday. A couple fours out there so far today uh, and a number of other earthquakes underneath that threshold that the USGS uses here. They normally only show uh, 4.5. Sometimes they'll throw in a 4.4 four-pointer. But uh, there's still a lot of activity stirring up there around the Philippines and a lot of aftershock activity here. Uh, in the Indonesia area where that 6.2 struck uh, just earlier this morning. Uh, still a lot of newer activity in this area, so keep a, you know, keep a watchful eye out for some larger movement. It does look like maybe we'll see something uh, in this region soon. There's that six-pointer from uh, yesterday. That was uh, eh, somewhat deep, about 33 miles deep there around the Solomon Islands region, but... Uh, Super active out there today across the area of the Indonesia region. Up north, Japan uh, looks like a couple fours here in the last 24 hours. Nothing big. Still watching the Nankai trough here. Up along the Curl Cam chat, got some fours stirring up. New Zealand down here got uh, 4.2. North Island, it looks like. The USGS is reporting that 4.2. 21 miles deep here. Just looks like it's on the uh, eastern coast here of North Island. About 5 o'clock in the a.m. That's going to be my time here, though. They're already in the future. Let's go ahead and take a look here at the uh, West Coast activity, see what we got going on. Not a whole lot here for the Pacific Northwest. That's because it is the weekend out here, and uh, for whatever reason, a lot of the smaller quake activity goes unreported. Um, so in that case here, I'm going to talk about this a little bit later in tonight's update. There's a an interesting um, informational um, diagram here of how to read the focal mechanisms there when you when you're looking at the type of fault it occurred on and whether it's a you know a strike slip a dipping oblique stuff like that we'll go over that a little bit later because I had a couple uh, uh, folks there commenting asking uh, if, they, if I could uh, shoot a little bit more information on that but we'll do that later tonight uh, by the way Cascadia trimmer activity only 12 southern coast there of Oregon underneath that area I want to check out the uh, Mount Rainier station up here real quick, see if there's anything of any uh, earthquake activity going on up there today. And then we'll get into California activity where there was some movement on the Hayward Fault. Uh, a couple earthquakes there, Mount St. Helens, or uh, Mount Rainier, excuse me. As you can see, pretty well defined. Uh, nothing big going on, but there's still earthquake activity occurring there. Uh, we'll go check out Mount Rainier here real quick, see what we have going on today. Up at the summit, or the dome, dome station up here. Uh, some very small microquake activity here, hidden in the background of the seismograph noise, or static, so to speak. Nothing big, just uh, some periodic earthquake activity there. Nothing, like I say, nothing in the elevated side. Uh, 2.1 down here across the southern end of the Cascadia subduction zone. This is about 10 miles underneath the area, so it's not associated with this fault system here, uh, more so into the subduction zone. Uh, there's an activity off of the Hayward Fault. It looks like a little swarm of activity stirring up here about 7 o'clock this morning. Um, started off in the 4 o'clock hour with a 1.5, it looks like, and then uh, we had a 3.2 and a couple other earthquakes in there. For now, is come to a halt there about 7.42 uh, in the morning. 
Nothing new uh, following that activity, but keep an eye on it. It does look like some movement working this way down south here off of the San Andreas Fault near the west side here of the San Joaquin Valley. Uh, got a little swarm going on there as well. Two-pointer and a 2.7. Couple other twos in there. Keep an eye here on the park field segment of the San Andreas Fault. We've been getting a lot of activity off of it. Um, this area of the San Andreas Vault is capable of at least producing a 6.0, and it's got these regular intervals here where we see them every 20 to 22 years on average. And our last one there was back in 2004. So a lot of activity occurring off of that plate boundary, indicating there that things are pretty well locked around that area. Uh, region of the plate boundaries um, park field section of the san andreas fault keep an eye on that uh, further south not a whole lot going on there across extreme southern california today uh, one earthquake along the garlock fault shear zone from uh yeah that that was this morning here 11 15 2.9 so as you can see elevated activity out here across west the west coast at least california anyway Nothing big happening for now, but when things are on the move, it's highly likely, or at least the possibilities go up, of seeing a larger event out there. Oil field's pretty quiet. Only a couple earthquakes being listed up on the map today. Not a whole lot going on there across the eastern portion of the country. Uh, take a look here at the earthquake 3D globe once again. Alaska pretty quiet up north. Uh, typical movement here across the Middle America Trench and the South America area. We had a number of earthquakes out here in these fracture boundaries yesterday. There's one of the older ones. Uh, things have up, have picked up a little bit there along the Prucelli Trench. Some fours and fives. Well, maybe not a five. There's some fours here, but that five-pointer offshore. Uh, so things are increasing in this area due to the uh, uh, the subduction zone here, the Prucelli Trench. I'll just keep a watchful eye on that. Uh, but so far, I mean, look at the cluster going on out here still. Out across the in Indonesia area, working its way up into the Burma region. Highly active out here in the last couple days. It's you know sticking out here like a sore thumb, so to speak. It's always active in this region. I call it the crunch zone, but this is way above the normal, um, the normal daily activity that we see out here in this region. So just keep an eye on it. We've had a number of of deeper quakes in the region, and that's why we're seeing that shallow adjustment take place out here. And, there's always a possibility we could see, still see some larger movement here along the Java Trench or anywhere out here in this region. 3.9 coming into the uh, uh, the area right now where that six-pointer struck this morning. So a little aftershock activity or just continued seismic activity. All right, uh, let's see what else we got. The Mediterranean region, some twos and threes out there. Nothing big going on. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Now let's take a look here at the space weather activity. We do have a uh, couple different coronal holes that are turning into view here. This one's a little bit older image from, uh, well, this shows today's UTC time, but at 1419, and we're past that. We are at um, 20, uh, 2010, so six hours, six hours old this image is. But either way, we have a couple different coronal holes that uh, are lining up. Coming into the uh, you know Earth directed view, here's a little bit more recent imagery, as you can see there, 2007. So things could stir up here in terms of earthquake activity over the last couple months. Here, every time we get a coronal hole facing us, at least a decent sized one, uh, we get some larger earthquake activity taking place here. So just be on guard. It's starting to become a somewhat of a regular pattern when we get events like that going on together. Space weather uptick and uh, earthquake activity. Flaring activity, though, is pretty quiet. Look at that flat line into the low B flare category. That's pretty crazy. See that? Just not a whole lot going on here as far as solar flare activity. Uh, we do have quite a bit of sunspots out here, but as I've always said, you could have 100 of these on the Earth-facing side. And uh, unless there's some magnetic complexity... Within these sunspots, they, it's not going to do anything. They're just they're sitting there, not even worth uh, looking at. So we're not looking at any major solar flare uptick for now. Uh, very minimal conditions there. 10% chance there for M flare, X flare, 1% or less. Aurora activity may be coming up here on the October 28th time period. Looks like we may have some uh, uh, some CME activity heading in this general 
direction towards the planet. We'll check back on that, though, at uh, a little bit later time as we get closer. Maybe a G1 class storm on the 28th UTC time. All right, uh, anything else going on here? Take a glance at the next close approach asteroids to the planet. That one's 2 million miles away. Not really worried about that. Ooh, look at this one. 660-foot stadium-sized asteroid. That's a big one. Uh, but fortunately for us there, it's been tracked since uh, <coughs> 2020. It seems like every time the, the weather gets damp out here, my it, it takes a couple weeks for my lungs to adjust out here. Been so used to the dry 100-degree heat out here in Northern California that get some moisture finally and uh, get some uh, buildup. But that's okay. 660, that is crazy. Yeah, 300 and, oh, no, that's 3 million. I was going to say if that's only 300,000 miles, that would be pretty close. But uh, 3 million, almost 4 million miles there for that one. That's a definitely a big one. Here's another big one, 4 million miles away. But I don't see anything of close nature, and that is a good thing, right? Don't want to have any more bad news in the, uh, the general news out here. I already got enough of it going on across the globe. Um, big storm out there in the uh, towards the Jamaica area. Melissa, look at that monster out there. Getting close to a Category 5. It is expected to strengthen into a Category 5 as it makes its northward turn here into Jamaica. Not a good scenario out there. That is a massive, well-defined eye there with that uh, tropical system. Wow, crazy. So as you can see here, uh, hurricane warnings in full effect out there across the Jamaica area. It is expected to be a Category 5. Right now, 140 mile per hour sustained winds. Uh, getting close here. All weather models shooting up around, uh, well, it looks like they backed off slightly. Upper 4, maybe a Category 5. We'll have to watch that. Either way, it's getting close. And the path is expected. It's a little bit better on this image to take a sharp northeastward turn um, over the next few days here. So it looks like um, even portions of Cuba area may be uh, getting some uh, hurricane activity right now, hurricane watch. Either way, that will weaken as it goes over the land, but it's going to be a big one as it goes over Jamaica. That's uh, is pretty crazy. Not good. Uh, California, we, got, we actually got some rain here this morning. I'll be darned. Uh, not nothing big. I think we picked up maybe 12 hundredths of an inch of rain. That's here around the Chico area, northern California, in the valley. The coast range, the higher elevation, of course, much more. Even some snow up at Mountain Lassen at the uh, visitor center up there. Pretty neat. So uh, that's going to move on out of the way. Unfortunately, we have a high-pressure ridge out here. I'm hoping that doesn't last for long. It looks good. Looks like it may last for a few days. And then uh, towards the end of the first week of November, we got another storm system lined up. Uh, this is our rainy pattern season out here. So we don't need to be having 70s and 80s out here in November, December uh, in dry weather. This is when the, this is some of our wetter months up here. December, November is when it really starts to get going here in Northern California. So as time goes on, if we don't get these storms, that's just one less drop of water in the in the rain gauge and i do not want to slip back into the drought out here across california we've been pretty fortunate here the last couple winters with some uh, decent precipitation but uh, we got 80s coming up in the forecast here to end october and that's yeah i mean it's happened before but if we keep seeing that through november that's not good either way signs are pointing towards a wetter pattern there in november time period we'll keep an eye on that Uh, Storm Prediction Center for severe weather today across the states. A little slight risk down here. Extreme area of, uh, looks like Pensacola, Florida. Maybe portions of Mississippi as well. Got a uh, little tornado threat. 5% and a 2% down there. Some wind. Not much in the hail department. All right. So anyway, folks, um, keep an eye on things. Got some activity stirring up here. Of course, we got a couple different coronal holes that are turning into the Earth-directed view. Well, they're almost directly facing us. Uh, so we'll watch the patterns out here over the next couple days, see if things don't increase. 
Uh, I do think we got potential over here for some larger movement in this area. I mean, we got two six pointers here in the last 24 hours. Clustering going on galore out here. Another earthquake, it looks like, in that region uh, where that six pointer struck this morning. So just keep a watchful eye out here. Things are uh, definitely moving, and there's potential for big mega quake activity out here, as we discussed in yesterday's update along the Java Trench uh, across a pretty decent segment here. All right, have a good one. We'll see you guys out here later on this evening for the Sunday night update. Sorry, I didn't get a chance to do the Saturday night update. Got caught up in a few things here. Uh, just kind of getting some family time in. Anyway, we will definitely be out here tonight, Sunday night, uh, for the uh, evening update. Take care and have a good one, folks.